they say bad things happen in threes. However, I would argue that MT09s happen in threes because I just bought my third one in three years, which is rather fitting since their three cylinders are their main attraction anyway. Thank you to Keeps for sponsoring this video. A lot of you guys think that I'm bald because I always wear a cap in videos, but I'm not. At least, not yet. You see, I've been mocking my dad about him losing his hair my entire life. However, it won't be so funny when it starts happening to me. And that is why prevention is key. And Keeps might be the solution for you. Because two out of three guys experience some form of hair loss by the age of 35. Keeps is a subscription service that delivers clinically proven treatments to combat hair loss symptoms straight to your door. All treatments are doctor recommended and come with 24 seven support from specialists so that you can keep the joys of helmet hair in your life for longer. So if you're ready to do something about your hair loss, head to keeps.com forward slash chaos causes or simply click the link in the description to get a hair raising 50% off your first order. My first MT-09 was a grey first generation that I only kept for 3 months. It was very disappointing, but purely because I was coming off of a Yamaha R6 and the MT was nothing like it. My second one was exactly the same, but a whole lot better. It was purple despite always looking black on camera, had an Olin's rear shock, Andreani 4 cartridges and an Akropovich full system exhaust that completely revolutionized it. But this one was also short lived, as I was forced to leave it behind when I left the UK. And for some reason I'm back with the third one, but this time with the second gen and without a doubt the best looking generation. So despite having had two MT-09s in the past three years, I only have about nine months of experience riding them in total. However, this time I'm convinced it's the perfect bike for me. I've actually had it for about two weeks now and I couldn't resist a little tease of the Yamaha key in my gear organizer video, which to my surprise, plenty of you noticed. So let me show you around. It's blue in all the places that it's not black and it has these sexy blue wheels as well. It's a 2018 with 10,000 kilometers on the clock and is 100% stock except for the slip-on Scorpion exhaust, which means it isn't suffocated anymore and actually sounds pretty damn good. See? And the scorpion exhaust on this is kind of fitting since the tail light on these also sort of looks like a scorpion. As I said, this is Yamaha's second generation MT-09, which they brought out in 2017. And the biggest changes from the first gen were ditching the big tail light for this pointier one, dropping the big old fashioned headlight for this transformer looking one, moving the indicators from next to the headlight to next to the radiator and also covering the side of the radiator with these shrouds to give it a more complete look. They also got traction control, which means the name now needs to be changed from MT to EAMT because now you're no longer the master of torque, but rather the electronically aided master of torque. Luckily, you can disable it if you get tired of it nagging because mode 2 doesn't let you have any fun and mode 1 just has your back. They also decided to do this elaborate number plate bracket that extends off of the swing arm instead of off of the tail. 
Everybody complains that a number plate ruins the tail of a bike, so this way it keeps the lines of the tail looking clean. And yet about 98.9% .9 of people still complain about the way that this looks. I'm not saying that I'm going to keep it, but I think that we should appreciate that Yamaha at least tried something different. And finally, they brought it up to date with a quick shifter. And this is actually the first bike I've ever had with a quick shifter. And I have to say, it's addicting. It makes complete sense with an engine that revs up quickly, but doesn't rev all that high. Because it feels like you have less time to change gears, especially when you're hanging on for dear life and can't quite make out what the tiny digital tachometer is saying. It's extremely satisfying banging up through the gears without needing to shut off, which requires zero skill anyway. It only works on the way up through the gears, meaning you can still enjoy the art of rev matching when downshifting. It definitely makes sense to have an auto blipper on something like a Ducati Multistrada, but not on a bike like this intended to be more bare bones and naughty fun. And that is pretty much it. There's not much else to say about it. It's just a pretty clean example of an MT-09 and my new pride and joy. For the first time ever, I didn't know exactly what bike I wanted next. In the past, I wouldn't have considered anything other than a sport bike or a big naked. Which, yes, I'm aware is kind of what I ended up with anyway, but the point is that my last year of enjoying riding a little 400 and learning to love motocross has taught me that I could actually enjoy just about any bike. So I kept an eye out for quite a few different types of bikes before the MT was the one that worked out the best in the end. My first choice would probably have been an XSR 900. They are just an MT-09 underneath, but they're at least unique and hipster while still being fun and fast. However, they're extremely rare to find around here. I know this isn't looking very good for me because they're all just MT-09s in different clothes. However, a few months back, I got to experience the BMW S1000XR, and I was really sold on the idea of a sports tourer. And Yamaha's version of a sports tourer started to look more appealing to me. However, they seem to sell very quickly when they pop up for sale, and unfortunately one didn't pop up at the right time for me. Yes, yes, I know, the only one that isn't a Yamaha. However, I already told you that my blood is blue. The 790 Dukes look like heaps of fun to ride, However, I think they look absolutely awful. They always look like they're trying to compensate for KTM's bad design by covering them up with infinite stickers. I'm not gonna lie, I did consider getting a big adventure bike, and it would have to be Yamaha's version, obviously. I do like the idea of going on long trips and being able to mess around on the dirt when I get bored, but I already knew that I would miss having a sportier bike, so that idea didn't last very long. At the end of the day, everything just lined up perfectly for me to sell my 390 Duke in the morning and buy this MT that evening. It was just meant to be. I've already done my first breakfast run on it and absolutely loved being back on a big bike again. As you can imagine, I sleep better at night knowing that I have a big bike waiting for me and I really missed neck snapping talk and effortless overtaking. And best of all, taking up dirt bikes has made me feel far more comfortable on a bike that is happy to break traction and lift the front wheel. I thought it might take me a while to get used to being back on a big bike, however, I feel more comfortable on it than ever before. I'm determined not to get complacent with this bike and appreciate the benefits of a big bike. However, we all know how quickly we take things for granted. But anyway, subscribe so you don't miss the MT adventures Hit the like button if you're happy to see big bikes back on the channel and I'll see you on the next ride.